Hey everybody, Nick Licamella here on Technique Peak. Today we're talking about the positive impact that a physical therapist can have on a woman who's going through the pregnancy process. Here are some examples of some activities that would really benefit a woman who's pregnant, as well as some other things to keep in mind with this type of patient. Let's take a look. All right, so what better way to talk about prenatal exercise and with an actual real live pregnant woman and I happen to have one right here and that pregnant woman just happens to be my beautiful wife Carly that's right everybody that is Mrs. Technique Peak herself so here we're just starting with some treadmill walking so prolonged walking was a provocative uh, activity for her so we are using the treadmill to, um, to go through some graded exposure to that activity. So we're walking on the treadmill for a duration that brings her to the right up to that edge of discomfort, right? And then we're going to stop, take a break, and then kind of push that threshold a little bit more. This way we kind of raise that threshold over time through that graded exposure to that activity. And like we talked about on the slides, we want to also um, train the cardiovascular system, right? So we don't want her to get out of breath when she walks across the room or walks up and down the stairs. On to the next exercise here, we have the leg press. Now, uh, what, like we said in the slides, it's very important to include strength training into her program. And you can see she's not doing, you know, lightweight. She's, she's loading that, right? right? She's loading that tissue. And that's what we want. We want progressive overload. Uh, with a good strengthening program, just like any other population, right? Have to have to overload those tissues to get the changes that we want. It's pretty much a low risk exercise. She's in a good posture here, a good position on the seat, and she's uh, it, it's easy to kind of load and unload this movement and modify it as needed. So I like the physio ball here. It adds some instability and it challenges her to um, kind of maintain a somewhat neutral spine. Neutral is of course a spectrum but we're challenging her spine to stay nice and, and stable as she's moving her arms with some resistance. So same concept here on the ball with the weighted scaption. Um, we are forcing her to stabilize herself on the ball as she is lifting uh, the weight with her upper extremities. Because when she goes to lift something, we want her to know what it feels like to stabilize her spine as she goes to lift the load. Up next is the good old squat, and I like using a TRX or any kind of suspension uh, trainer here because I want her to hold that position in the bottom. I want her to feel what that feels like to be in that hole in the bottom of the squat um, and controlling her lower back, right? I want her to be able to control that lordosis and not just kind of fall into that lordosis. I want her to control her lumbo-pelvic junction as she sits into that squat. And in that position, she's also getting good burn in the quads and the glutes. Speaking of burning quads and glutes, I love this weighted pull. I love this for a few reasons. The strap is kind of right where her glutes meet her lumbar spine. So it's pulling her into a lordosis. So she is being forced to kind of resist that lordosis and control her pelvis as she's moving, which again, we want her to do whenever she's um, walking or lifting a load. We want her to control her spine and her pelvis and prevent falling into that lordosis uncontrollably. Up next, we have a deadlift from the floor. So this is kind of more like a sumo deadlift with a medicine ball. She has been taught to keep the load close to her body and lift with her legs, keeping a relatively flat back tight upper body and kind of go down right into that hip hinge to lift the load. So we're going to groove this movement and we're going to load this movement so that it has good functional carryover whenever she wants to lift something up from the floor. Up next is another one of my favorites, the hip thrust. So the bands here, I put them like this because I wanted to load the hip thrust, but when we load the hip thrust, usually we place a weight on the lower abdomen. Obviously we're not going to do that with a woman who's pregnant. So I have the band wrapped around her proximal thighs and under her feet to kind of resist that um, explosive hip, hip extension. And then I have a band around her knees so that she is pressing out into the band and isometrically um, working on hip abduction as well. I like the hip thrust for a couple different reasons. The main one being that at the top of that um, exercise, at the top in that top position, she is squeezing her glutes and coming out of that lumbar lordosis and kind of letting that lower back round into a little bit of a posterior pelvic tilt. As she descends down into the bottom position, she is going into a bit of a lordosis. However, it is controlled. So I want her to 
not avoid a lordosis, but I want her to be able to control that position. Up next, we have a classic core exercise here, and that is the kneeling chop. So she is uh, kneeling with uh, one foot right in front of her knee, so she's kind of like on a tightrope. That makes this very challenging. She has to stabilize everything from her feet all the way up to her torso. And I don't want her rotating um, because you want to be careful with rotation um, with women who are pregnant. So I want her to keep her, her trunk and her torso stable and just move her arms and maintain that neutral spine and that stable spine. Now you don't want to avoid rotation, it's not dangerous, but you just want to be careful with it. Up next is just the UBE, right? So this is a fantastic way to work on some endurance. Um, not necessarily the goal here isn't to strengthen her arms, it's just to kind of work on her cardiovascular health and train endurance here, which is very, very important. Um, again, we don't want her to get winded with everyday activities, we want her to build up her endurance. And um, here we're going to stand up. So now she has to stabilize her entire spine as she is propelling the UBE. Up next, we're going to do a modified bird dog. Now, it's modified because um, with, with pregnant women, the one, one thing that you want to watch out for is really stressing the uh, muscles of the anterior abdomen, right? So you want to avoid a lot of tension uh, in the anterior abdomen, so things like planks or crunches. You want to be careful with um, forcefully contracting the um, rectus abdominis as it gets stretched during the pregnancy. So we're doing a modified bird dog here. The mat on the floor is a fantastic way to measure progress. So the further she moves her feet out from the table, the harder the exercise will be. And that mat is actually numbered each of the lines so that she can measure her progress each time she does this. She can try to move her feet back further and further um, to kind of progress this exercise. So again, she's keeping a neutral spine as she lifts her arm and her leg. She's squeezing her glute as she lifts the back leg. And she's not rotating. She's not falling into a lordosis. So no, this isn't nap time. Um, but we're going to finish up with some strategic ways to properly position a pregnant uh, woman. The pillow between the knees helps take some pressure off the lower back and sciatic nerve. Um, and the pillow underneath the belly area um, helps kind of unweight that, that belly. It's, you know, it's a decent amount of weight pulling her down. So a pillow underneath um, the side of her belly really helps with that. And lying, side lying is typically a, comfort, a comfortable position. Sometimes supine can be a bit uncomfortable with all of that weight kind of pressing down into her. Um, so side lying tends to be a position of comfort. Uh, you can also kind of build up uh, the pillows uh, on her back if she is lying on her back um, to elevate her up a little bit. That, um, that will also sometimes do the trick. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Technique Peak. I hope this helped, and we'll see you next time.